Hey guys, my name is Trevor Sullivan and welcome back to my channel. Thanks for watching. Please make sure that you are subscribed to my channel if you aren't already. And if you like this video by the end of it, please make sure to leave a like and thumbs up and leave a comment and let me know what other kind of content you would like to see on my channel in the future. Now, today's particular video is going to kind of build on a couple of recent videos that I did where I was demonstrating how you can use Docker, Docker Desktop specifically, on the Windows platform to test out different versions of PowerShell very easily. And I'm actually going to be building on a topic that I talked about way back in, I believe, 2015 on a topic called PowerShell splatting. So you should already be familiar with PowerShell splatting, but if you're not, then we're going to briefly cover it today, but we're actually going to be showing the difference between how splatting works in PowerShell version 7.1.0, which is the latest PowerShell release, as compared to PowerShell version 6, specifically version 6.2.4, previously, and we're going to be using Docker containers in order to very easily spin up PowerShell running two different versions without having to, quote, install it, and we'll take a look at what those differences are. So let's jump over here into my desktop for now, and this is my YouTube channel here uh, just that I have open in Firefox, and if we just go over to the videos pane, you'll see there's a couple of videos here that shows how to run PowerShell version 5.1.0 on Windows containers. There's also another video that talks about how to run different PowerShell versions side by side using Linux containers, and that's the one that we're actually going to be kind of building off of today. Now, if you were to go back in my video history several years here, you would actually find and do a control F here for splat. Uh, there should be a video here somewhere. Let me just do, oh yeah, here it is. So five years ago, PowerShell splatting overview. So this video just kind of introduces the concept of PowerShell splatting to you. And uh, it's, it's a really good technique to just keep in mind uh, as you're building out PowerShell scripts. It just kind of helps simplify the syntax. And we're going to take a look at that here in a moment. But what I wanted to do is actually use Docker Desktop to spin up a couple of containers running different versions of PowerShell so that we can take a look at some differences between how they work. In fact, if you were to bring up the documentation on docs.microsoft.com for PowerShell version 7.1, and then if you do a control F and just search for splat, you'll actually see that there's this new feature or a change in behavior in how splatting works between PowerShell 7.1.0 and previous versions of PowerShell. And this is a, a breaking change as it's categorized under the breaking changes category. So let's go ahead and start by spinning up a couple of PowerShell containers. And then what we'll do is we'll connect Visual Studio Code to those containers. So we'll have two separate VS Code windows. And then we'll take the same PowerShell script in each uh, of those windows and take a look at how things differ a little bit here. So what we're going to do in order to spin up these Docker containers is to go to the PowerShell repository on the Docker Hub. You should already have Docker installed if you don't go watch my previous video that talks about running PowerShell versions side by side. Um, I'm just going to be using Docker Desktop here on Windows 10. So what we're going to do is scroll down and look at all of the different tags that are supported here. And there's actually a link here that shows all of the supported tags, which are pulled from metadata at the Microsoft Container Registry at mcr.microsoft.com. So this basically is just a JSON response that contains all of the different tags supported by the PowerShell. So the PowerShell image, rather. So basically, what we're going to be doing is looking for kind of the latest version of PowerShell version 6. So as you can see, we're kind of going through these point releases, 6.2.3. Okay, here's 6.2.4, and then it jumps from version 6 up to version 7. So what we'll do is basically look for 6.2.4, and we want to use kind of the latest version of Ubuntu as kind of the base image that we're building off of. So I'm going to be using this image right here, which is 6.2.4 Ubuntu Bionic. Uh, they don't have an Ubuntu Focal FASA, Focal FASA image, which would be Ubuntu 20.04. Uh, they only have that for version 7 and later, maybe even 7.1 and later. So as far as the version 6 goes, we're going to spin up 6.2.4 Ubuntu Bionic here. So let's go ahead and do Docker run. 
dash dash rm. That will basically just cause the container to die off after we're done with it. We'll do dash it to make it interactive. And then we'll do mcr.microsoft.com slash PowerShell colon, and then the name of the tag of the version that we specifically want to run, which in this case is just going to be 6.2.4 dash Ubuntu dash Bionic. All right, so now we've got a PowerShell 624 container running. I'm going to hit Control P Q to detach from that container, but leave it running in the background. So if I do Docker PS now, you can see that I spun up this brand new container running 6.2.4 Ubuntu Bionic there. The name of the container that was automatically assigned by the Docker daemon is Peaceful Swanson. I'm actually just going to really quickly kill off these other containers that I don't need. So I'll do Docker RM F to force. 198 and 007, 007. That's kind of cool. So we killed off those two containers. So if we do a Docker PS now, you should see that there is only a single container running at this point in time. So now we need to spin up a second container, which is PowerShell version 7. 7.1 specifically, because if we spin up version 7.0, it would actually still have the old splatting behavior. So let's go ahead and just tab up through here. It looks like there's actually some tags here with PowerShell version 7.2 preview version 1 available, but we're not going to use that. We're going to use the release version just for demonstration. And as you can see here, we've actually got a version 7.1.0 image based on Ubuntu Focal Fossa, which is kind of nice. So I'm actually going to use that one. So let's do a, another Docker run command here. And instead of using the 624 tag, we'll just paste in the 710 Ubuntu focal tag. So that is not actually downloaded locally. Oh, wait, yes, it is. Um, I was going to say I should have I should have had it there because I spun it up earlier. But now we're running PowerShell 7.1 on top of Ubuntu focal, the base image. So I'll hit Control PQ to detach from that container. And now we should have two containers running. One of them is running 624 here, Peaceful Swanson. And then our second container that we just spun up here 18 seconds ago, 17 seconds ago, is Compassionate Austin. And that is our 7.1 container. So we'll just want to keep those container names in mind as we connect VS Code to it. So now what I'm going to do is actually fire up VS Code here. And I'll just create a new window, bring it over here. And now what we're going to do inside of VS Code, you should have the extension installed called Remote Containers. So here's this Remote Containers feature. And we're basically going to be using this extension in VS Code to connect our VS Code window into that remote containerized environment so that we can test stuff out. So what you'll want to do is hit F1 or Control Shift P or Command Shift P if you're on Mac to bring up the command palette in VS Code. And then if you search for remcon, rem space con, there should be this attached to running container command. And I have it in my recently used list here. But if you don't, just search for remcon at. And uh, that should yield that command as a result. So what you'll do is just hit attach to running container. And then it will prompt you which container do you want to connect to. So it actually shows us not only the container name, but also the image tag that was used to spin it up so we can easily see which version of PowerShell we're running here. So I'll connect this one to 6.2.4 right now. So that's basically going to install the VS Code kind of server side extension that it uses to connect into that container. And in the meantime, I'll switch back to this window and hit F1, attach to running container, and then I'm going to attach this new window to version 7.1.0. So now I'll hit, so now we've got this bash prompt, as you can see, inside of this container here. And then over here, we've got kind of two separate windows here. Each of them is running a different version of PowerShell. It does technically show you in the bottom left-hand corner of VS Code here that it's connected to a container, but it doesn't, it's not really obvious which version is running. So what I'll do is actually just fire up PowerShell here in each of those two windows. And now on the right-hand side here, I've got PowerShell version 7.1.0. And on the left-hand side, let me close this window, I've got PowerShell 6.2.4. So everything looks good there so far. So now what I want to do is actually go to the 7.1.0 window, and we'll install the 
PowerShell extension here. So I'll go ahead and just say install inside of the container here. And then that's going to give us the kind of PowerShell capabilities inside of this container. I actually ran into a problem as I was kind of doing some prep for this video where it seems like there's a, a problem installing that extension with PowerShell 6.2.4. Um, not really sure why that is, but I just came across an error and briefly researched it. And uh, unfortunately, it just doesn't seem like that's going to work for now. So um, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and create a new PowerShell script here inside of this window. So I'll hit Control KM, change the language mode to PowerShell. I just did that a second ago. And as you can see, that kind of triggered the PowerShell extension to start up here. And so now we've got the PowerShell integrated console that you're accustomed to inside of VS Code. So now what we're going to do is actually talk about PowerShell splatting itself as we write out a script. So if you remember from this video that I did five years ago, nothing's really changed. Basically, the uh, the concept here is that you have a very long command. So maybe something like start process dash file path PowerShell. And then you've got some arguments in an array like dash command followed by an actual command like write host hello followed by sleep one followed by write host done. And then maybe at the end of that, you have a wait parameter. And so the idea here with splatting is that you can take all of these arguments that you're just statically passing into this command, and you can actually refactor them as a PowerShell hash table instead. And what this does is it helps kind of clean up your syntax so that all of the parameters that are going to be passed into this command are easily readable in more of a vertical fashion instead of a horizontal fashion. And it also has the fringe benefit of allowing you to kind of audit your parameters. So I could insert like a write host statement here and actually audit the parameter values that were being passed in prior to actually invoking the command. And so that's useful for logging purposes. So I'll do wait equals true. And so now that we've defined this hash table here that contains our input parameters, we can splat them by using the at sign instead of uh, just passing them in using named parameters traditionally. So this is the this is the PowerShell splatting syntax. You create a hash table, a dictionary key value pairs of your parameters, and then you at, use the at variable name params to pass them or splat them onto the command. And then of course, the benefit here is that we can kind of log these parameters before they're actually being passed in, in the event that these parameters were actually being dynamically generated. So maybe you get a value from one location, you feed it into another function, and you want to be able to audit that using your logs, your application logs, splatting allows you to accomplish that. So that's pretty cool. Now, what's different between PowerShell version 7.1.0 and 6.2.4, or actually really 7.0.0 for that matter, is that we can now override some of these parameters that are being splatted by using named parameters in conjunction with splatting. So let's start by taking a look at how it worked previously. So in PowerShell 6.2.4 here, I'm going to go ahead and paste in this script. And I don't believe this PowerShell is actually going to start up. Yeah, we have this command PowerShell show session menu failed. Not sure why that's happening. But what I'm going to do is just basically copy this command into the interactive terminal here. And then we'll go ahead and run start process at params. And it looks like it doesn't like the sleep abbreviation. So I'll actually change that to start sleep. And then what I'll do is redefine that, paste that in, try to run start process. And as you can see, we get hello, it waits for a second, and then we get done. So that's basic PowerShell splatting. That works as expected. However, what if I actually wanted to override one of these parameters that's already been defined inside of this splatting hash table, but just do it on a kind of one-off basis. So maybe I want to change dash wait to false instead. So if I just copy this command here, start process wait false, and hit run, you can see that we get this error message. I'll hit control B to just close that sidebar there. You can see we get this error message basically saying cannot bind to parameter because the wait parameter has been specified more than once. So what's happening here is that we've basically 
specified it inside of our hash table that we're using to then splat onto the command, but then we're actually specifying it a second time by using the named parameter on the command line. So effectively, this parameter is being specified twice, and PowerShell doesn't like that in the older versions. So what's cool here is that, let's just hit F5 to run this script. Should work okay in PowerShell 7.1, I believe. Of course, it's not cooperating. So what I'll do is just do what I did before, where I go ahead and just paste this in, define my hash table, and we'll test out running start process. Of course, I have to fix that sleep command again here. So let's do that. And then um, what you can see here is that this, this works normally, right? We just have our spl basic splatting here. But what's different here is that if we were to specify weight false in this version of PowerShell, check it out. We no longer are getting this error message that says cannot bind parameter because weight is specified more than once because PowerShell is actually allowing us to override parameters using named parameters instead. So what I could also do is specify dash argument list here, and then I could say dash command is maybe write post v7, just for example. And let's go ahead and hit f8 to run that. And as you can see, we've actually overridden argument list. And instead of printing out hello, and then sleeping, and then done, we're actually just spitting out the text v7 here instead. So PowerShell version 7.1.0 actually allows you to override these splatting parameters that are typically coming from your hash table if you would like to. So that's pretty much all I had for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and kind of saw a practical use case for using different versions of PowerShell running inside of containers to actually just kind of learn about how PowerShell works across different versions. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.